Now, I shouldn't be surprised by any of this anymore, but I can't help it. Every time I think Fox News has hit bottom, they find a way to get worse. So radio host Bill Cunningham implied while appearing on Sean Hannity's show that Obama's upbringing in Indonesia prevents him from opposing terrorism. Listen to this, quote, Sean Hannity, maybe his middle name is a clue. We're back to the Hussein nonsense. As well as the fact that he spent his childhood practicing the Muslim faith. I think, of course, he's a Christian now. Of, of course, of course. But we have to understand where he came from. He says the sweetest sound he ever heard was prayers at sunset. So with that orientation, I think it's hard for this to say anything other than Muslim jihadist terrorist because it runs contrary to what he was taught as a boy in Honolulu and Jakarta, Indonesia. Now, of course, he spent the overwhelming majority of his childhood in Honolulu, but notice how it's an old Republican trick. You mention uh, the thing you want to highlight over and over and over and over to the point where people don't bother to look up the facts and see he was mostly in Hawaii. They just go, oh, well, they said Indonesia a lot, so I bet he was in Indonesia the entire time, and maybe he's even Kenyan. Yeah, that secret Muslim, yeah, yeah. But think about how intellectually bankrupt this is, man. Now, you guys know I go after Obama all the time because oftentimes he deserves it between continuing a lot of the Bush uh, national security stuff, pissing on the Constitution, not being hard enough on the Republican douchebags who will never agree with him anyway, compromising too much, negotiating too much, giving away the farm at the beginning, right? And there's a million legitimate things to go after him for. But they always go to the well of, hmm, he might be sympathetic to terrorists. Hmm. Now think about the massive amount of evidence they're disregarding to try to make that dumb point. I mean, this is the guy who got bin Laden. This is the guy who, even though we have between 50 and 100 Al-Qaeda operatives in Afghanistan, he said, yeah, we're going to keep 68,000 of our troops there uh, longer than we originally said, and we'll draw down slower than we originally said, and even when we're supposed to pull out completely in 2014, we're still going to keep up to 20,000 guys there. That guy is sympathetic to terrorism? Who are you kidding? Between Bush and Obama, we spent between four and six trillion dollars when all said and done on the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. We still have 900 military bases around the world. We drone the fuck out of everything in sight. Only 2% of the drones hit Al-Qaeda operatives. We're droning innocent people left and right. You want them to be tougher on Al-Qaeda and terrorism in the Muslim community? They've already overstepped their, their bounds. They've already gone way too far. But what am I doing? I'm using logic and reason and rationality to try to have a conversation with people who aren't interested in any of those things. I mean, look, seriously, think about it. We talked, Brian Fisher the other day went to the well of uh, Democrats and uh, Muslims, uh, extremist Muslims, they're one and the same. John Hagee said, yeah, you know what brings them together? They both like big government. What? A and now you got this dumbass Cunningham, Limbaugh's been saying it for a week now, if the only thing you can do is, as part of a political discussion, is try to pretend like the opposition agrees with terrorists and Al-Qaeda, how monumentally intellectually bankrupt are you? That is an admission that they can't win on the substance. They can't debate income tax rates with us. They can't debate social policy and gay marriage with us. They can't win on a, a debate about earned benefit programs or should we stop the wars? They can't win on the substance at all. So what do they do? They go to DEF CON 12 and talk about how, oh, well, uh, the, uh, my enemies are like Osama bin Laden. Give it up, man. 